One thing that's very important that we're going to do all the way through uh, AP Physics 1 this year and AP Physics 2 this year and AP Physics C when you get to that is uh, using literal equations. Now, when I talk about literal equations, I'm not talking about literally using an equation. That's obvious. What we're going to do is math without numbers. So when I say literal equations, it just means we're going to use variables and variables only. This is an important mathematical skill that you're going to need. Um, it's important for multiple reasons. One of them being uh, the AP people really, 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 really want you to do math without numbers. And just it's important in physics to be able to look at relationships in terms of variables and not numbers. So um, you guys remember way back in the day when you learned your order of operations. You did PEMDAS, where you did parentheses first. What was inside the parentheses you did first, if there were any parentheses. And if there were any exponents, you did those second. Then you did multiplication. Then you did division. Then you did addition and subtraction. That's our order of operations. Uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, I think is the acronym you guys used for that. Um, that's the order of operations. That's what your calculator does if you put it in there. If you have a whole bunch of numbers in an equation, that's the order that you deal with those numbers. Now, when you are solving an equation, you do it in the opposite direction. We go backwards when we are solving for a variable in an equation. I don't... So you're going to do your addition of subtraction first and work your way towards more complicated things. That's how you're going to deal with uh, solving literal equations. And the best way I can think to do this is to run you through three examples uh, and then let you work on a worksheet of these equations on your own tonight before we come to class tomorrow. When we do come into class tomorrow, you're going to have a quiz and I'm going to ask you to solve a literal equation. So be ready for that. So here's our first example. And I'm going to choose not just equations that I made up, but equations that you will run into at some point this year. That's what we're after. Equations that you're going to use and you're going to need to know how to manipulate. So let's say we have this one. V squared equals V with a little zero squared plus 2A times the quantity X minus X little zero. Now that little zero thing, take note, that little zero means it's the initial value. So this says final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times final position minus initial position. Those are the quantities that go with each one of those variables. Variables mean something here. Now, to do literal equations, you don't really need to know that. You just need to know what we're solving for. In this case, we are going to solve for the final x, the x without the little knot on it. So we're doing reverse PEMDAS. So the first thing we're going to do is any addition and subtraction to get that whole term to a with parentheses by itself. Okay. Our goal here is to get x alone and on top. Now it's already on top, so we don't have to deal with that, but we're going to get it alone. Everything else needs to move over. So the first thing we do to move things over is addition or subtraction. So we're going to subtract over V0 from both sides. Now when we do that, oops, sorry, pausing. When we do that, the V0 goes away. So let's back up just a hair. We have V squared minus V0 squared equals 2A. Now that's as much addition and subtraction as we can do right now because the other stuff's in the parentheses and we can't deal with the parentheses until the very end. So now, in order to get x by itself, we're going to need to divide. This time we're going to divide by 2a. When we do that, the 2a on the right side cancels out and we're left with that. Now we can deal with what's inside of the parentheses because we've done all the rest of the stuff. So, in order to get x by itself, we're going to have to add again. This time we're going to add x0 to both sides. It's going to cancel out. And at the end, we have this big term, v squared minus v0 squared over 2a plus x initial equals x final. 
That's how we solve for that. The best way to deal with these is just practice, 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 practice. We're just moving things from one side to the other. And our ultimate goal is to get the variable that we're looking for by itself. So here's another example. Same equation. Pardon the bell. Same equation, but this time we're going to solve for A. So, to do that, again, the first thing we need to do is move the V0 squared to the other side. We're going to need to subtract. So we're going to subtract that from both sides of the equation, and then write down what we get. So we get V squared minus V0 squared equals that term 2A times X minus X0. Now, we're trying to solve for A, so we need to get rid of everything on the right side of the equation that's not A. So in order to get rid of the 2, we have to divide by 2. In order to get rid of the x minus x0, we're going to divide by that entire term. When we do that, the 2 crosses out, and that x minus x0 term crosses out. But if we do it to the right side of the equation, we're going to have to do it to the left side of the equation. So we'll divide by 2, and we'll divide by x minus x0. Now we're done. So we're just going to write down the left side of the equation. No, nope, I left off squared. And set it equal to a. Let's just adjust that so we're absolutely accurate with that. Yeah. Sorry for the mistake there. That was pretty easy. Again, we're just manipulating things, moving things around. Here's the last one that we'll do right now. So, this one, t equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G. And just to be mean, I'm going to make you solve for G. I think it would be a good idea if you paused the video right now and tried it on your own first, and then checked yourself later. So go ahead and pause finish it, and then hit play. Now, when you're solving for this, our goal is to have g by itself and on top of the equation. So, square root is kind of like parentheses. We don't deal with that until that's the only thing we have to deal with. So I want that whole square root of L over g term by itself first. So to do that, we're going to have to divide both sides by 2 pi. When we do that, the 2 pi's cross out on the right side, and we're left with t over 2 pi is equal to the square root of L over G. Now, we need to get rid of that square root sign. So in order to get rid of the square root, we have to square the entire right side of the equation. But when we square the right side of the equation, we also have to square the left side of the equation. And we're going to distribute that square to all of those parts. So that gives me t squared over 4, which is... 2 squared, pi squared, is equal to L over G. Now we have a bit of a problem because the G is on the bottom. Ultimately, we want it by itself, but it also has to be on top. So we have to do whatever we can to get G to be on top. Now if I take the right side and I multiply that by G, that's going to cancel out G's on that side, but I also have to multiply the other side by G. So what that's going to leave me with is g times t squared over 4 pi squared. Now I have the g on top, and that's equal to L. So now the g is on top, and I need to get it by itself. And since we only have multiplication and division here, that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to take and divide each side of the equation by t squared. That's going to get rid of the t squareds. And I'm going to multiply each side of the equation by 4 pi squared. That's going to get rid of the 4 pi squareds on the left side of the equation. So all those things cross out. And I'm left with g equals l times 4 pi squared over t squared. If you are familiar and comfortable with cross multiplication, I am comfortable with you doing cross multiplication to find g. But you need to be careful with it as you go through these steps. All right. You have things to practice at home now, so 
practice those, and we'll come back tomorrow and work on it.